What's up guys, welcome back to Demystifying History. As usual, I was on the lookout for another subject to talk to you guys about when I stumbled across today's topic. So today I'm going to talk about a knife, one that was invented long long ago in the sprawling lands of Japan. This knife is called the Tanto. The Tanto is a knife that was developed during the Heian period which is from 794 to 1185 AD. During this time in Japan, there were many schools where you could train to be a samurai. These institutes taught Kenjutsu and followed various schools of thought. Many schools taught a technique called um, wait a second, Ryoto Sukai and this translates to two swords as one. So in this technique, the samurai would carry their main sword, the larger katana and also carry a secondary smaller sword which was the tanto. A cool analogy could be like when playing Call of Duty, you have a primary which is your assault rifle or sniper and you have a secondary which is your pistol. So the pistol is the equivalent of the Tanto. There are 12 different types of Tanto knives. Some of them have been lost to history but others they stood the test of time and now they have been integrated into modern militaries. Would you believe that a bullet is ineffective at piercing modern soft body armor? while a Tanto knife can slice through it like a hot knife on butter. Owing to its durable and snap resistant tip, it has found its place with most modern militaries today. Come, let's build the Tanto. A miniature version of course. So the Tanto is actually supposed to be around the length of an adult forearm, but the one I'm going to build will be around a quarter of the size. So let's get on with the build. Okay. So the first thing to do while making a knife is to draw the design out on a piece of paper. So I take my time drawing the general design of a tanto and then adding a few bits and pieces here and there so that it gives the blade some character. So you can see that I changed the plunge line here. So the next thing to do is to cut out the design. Of course, we should always leave a margin while cutting the design out so that we don't have to grind exactly to that line. So here you can see me cutting the blade out and creating a template. So now sticking the template onto the steel. It's better if we follow some lines of the steel and try and match it up with the template. It'll make it easier while grinding. From here begins the grinding process. So first I cut out the blade on the piece of steel using an angle grinder. So obviously this generates a lot of sparks and I use a cut off wheel, a grinding wheel and a flap disc to actually shape the blade properly. So here I, you can see that I'm cutting out the angles properly on this blade. Now I use the grinding wheel to add a bevel to the blade. As you can see on a knife you have the kind of the pointed portion so that's what's called the bevel of the blade. So here I take my time carefully adding a bevel so that it doesn't overshoot, the plunge line is perfect and it gives me some room to work with in later sanding stages. So during this sanding stage I can take my time with a Dremel and some files and basically try to shape the blade exactly the way I want it, mostly bases on the template. So now here I use 36 to 400 grit sandpaper with some water and try to clean up the blade before the hardening process. Now here we begin with the hardening process. Basically I take some pliers, I heat up the blade till it is blue and I have some warm oil next to me and basically in this shot as you can see I take the blade and then dunk it in the oil. So when I dunk it in the oil what happens is that the blade becomes hard and in this process, it is less likely to crack when I subject it to stress and pressure. Now, as for the handles, I take a circular saw and cut out some piece of wood. And then I come back with an angle grinder and a flap disc and try to thin it out. I try to do this so that I don't have too thick a handle relative to my blade. So I take my Dremel and sand down the sides of this handle so it's kind of comfortable to hold. Now I use a pencil and the tang of the blade to actually mark out the area which I need to make a groove in so that the tang sits flush to the handles. 
So here I basically ensure which side of the handles actually look good if I put them together and that basically wraps it up. So now I come back with a Dremel and a flap sander of 80 grit and make the groove properly. I ensure that all the edges and corners line up so that I basically fit the blade perfectly. So here since I have to connect wood to metal, I use a two-part epoxy. In this two-part epoxy, I basically spread it out on every surface that has been connected, put the blade and the handles together, check if they align, and eventually put it in the bench wise, clamping them properly. And then I take an old rag and basically wipe off any excess. Now here I come back and take a flap sander and the Dremel and turn it up to max speed so that I can tone down the edges and also remove out any squeezed out epoxy. So obviously you people have seen this sanding and dremeling process so I'm just gonna turn up the music. Now we come back to the more satisfying bits of the woodworking process. So I take some pre-stain which is basically a conditioner for wood and I take it and apply it in heavy doses all across the blade. This basically uh, ensures even application of stain once I do that. Now I take some walnut stain and basically apply it to the blade once the conditioner is dried. So as you can see, you can see the grain pop and the color soak into the blade perfectly. So I had to wipe this off after 5 minutes, I kind of lost the clip, so anyway you know how this works out. So I color the blade properly and do 2 more coats of this before I can set it to dry. Now for a bit of protection on the blade. Once the stain has been applied, I use this fast acting polyurethane spray and basically spray it. This is supposed to be giving me a matte finish and it gives the blade some character and also protects the blade from any spills, runs or possibly even drips, cuts and even stains. So here are the final results. I hope you guys enjoyed that section and I'm actually really happy of how this turned out. Just to put this out there that this is a scale model, it's not intended for any use and it would be advisable not to replicate my actions. So I hope you had fun and learned something new through this video. And that being said, my name is Vidant, this is Demystifying History and I'll catch you in the next one.